man, gravel is laughing. Gravel is laughing. I wanna push this thing to the front. This what do they call this again? Flexible roof rack. Lock this thing. Guys, do you see what just happened right now? Because I need to explain what just happened. When I was investing right now, I was on 2H. And that's where I normally drive these cars on when I'm on the tar road. But because of that, all the talk was coming to the rear wheels and I couldn't get help from the front wheel so that I can be able to get over that curb. That is one principle that I want us to talk about. Otherwise, welcome to the channel. It's Sibua and I appreciate that you're here with me today. So today we have the Ford Ranger World Trek X. See what I'm doing? See what I'm doing? Those who know, they know. So I understand that may be a little bit confusing because there's just so many ranges. I mean, the spec levels are limitless. If I was to count from single cab, super cab, I'm looking at the double cabs as well. I, I don't think I'll finish. I'll fi I don't think I'll finish because the double cabs alone, if I, you were to choose any of them, you're probably going to find yourself having to choose between 27 variants. I mean, they're split into categories in this case. You get the base, you get the XL family, you get the Wild Trek family. Ah, uh -uh, I even missed the XLT family. You get, let me start again. You get the base, the XL family, you get the XLT family that goes together with the tremor that was introduced just a while back. And then you get the Wild Trek family that goes together with this and the platinum. And then you get the category of the mighty Raptor, of course, that's chilling alone. But today we have this. I mean, if I was to even talk pricing, I don't think I'll finish today. So all of them, I think they started around 522,000. I'll put the price on the screen and they top at 1.2 million somewhere there. Yeah, but this one is coming in at around 1 million and 40. Yeah, I'll put the prices here. But otherwise, I just want to show you how different is this one compared to the one that we had previously when we were standing right here and we were going through the three liter wall track because this one is not a three liter, but we need to talk about everything that it offers compared to the other ones. Let's do it. All right, so let's jump in and hit the road. Okay. So here's the thing, eh? this is the one that one would be expecting the 3 liter in at this point, especially because it's off-road focused, you know, you can look at it from outside and see that it's ready to take you off-road. But hey, they put the 2 liter in here, the one that we are used to, 2 liter by table, 154 kilowatts, 500 newton meters, newton meters of torque. Yep, it's not the 3 liter and you can't get it in 3 liter unless if you just want to probably try to spec it like this. I don't even know if you can be able to do that from Ford directly, but maybe aftermarket, I don't know. But hey. This is the first two liter that they introduced with the permanent four wheel drive system because it was only available with the three liters before this one. And I understand the tremor as well does get the system that you're getting here. And when I was saying, I'm going to explain why the rear wheels were spinning when I was getting on that cab that time, it's because I was on 2H. Let me start it. Ha, <laughs> this grr. <laughs> I love it. I love it. One thing I love about this two liter actually is that it does the crack, you know. It's not something that you're finding in the three liter V6. Let's turn off this aircon. In, in the three liter V6, because yeah, you know, it's it's sophisticated, it's it's punchy, but the sophistication is a little bit too much for a ranger. I love it in the Everest because that's where I'm expecting that. I mean an SUV, the platinum, you know, three liter, and yeah, it's but in here, man, I need this. I need that. I need that when I'm in 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 the bucky. But otherwise, yes. Back to this thing. The 4H to H4L. We know this. Check out our videos from back then. Of course, they've always been there. In here, you do get that permanent four-wheel drive option. When you're on it, basically, this car is like 
what can I say? How, how can I put this? You know, in medieval times, when they were rowing the boats, right? Maybe there are four guys in front, four guys at the back, and what they are doing is just rowing, rowing, rowing. But if they feel that the guys at the back, they need more power for some reason, they'll say, send two guys at the back. And then two guys will remain in front, and then two more guys will be at the back. And if they need in front, I think the same thing will be done. So basically, the system will keep doing that as and when you are moving, if you are on 4A like this. That's why it's not a problem Problem, even if you're driving on tar road with it because it does think for you whenever there is traction that is being lost in front or at the back it will be sending the torque just just as and when it's needed but when you're on 4h that's not the case when you're on 4h it's locked at that particular torque split if it's 50 50 50 will remain in front 50 will remain at the back and there's no change in that that's why it's normally not recommended for tar roads like this uh because then it doesn't help you with turning quickly and so on and so on but otherwise i keep it on 2h because for some reason i had that it saves fuel and that's the thing that i love about it but this two liter if you remember very well uh we were here we we were reviewing the three liter wild track from this particular spot uh, don't tell me about heel assist now. I'm not looking for that. We were reviewing it from this particular spot and I did indicate that when it comes to the 2 liter, pulling it, you will feel that, that table leg before you actually get anything out of it. And it. Woo. So, here's the thing. In the 3 liter, immediately you put your foot down it doesn't feel heavy at all and that's the main difference that i'm getting from these two engines while this one when it's already on the move it doesn't disappoint it performs i love it like that but the table leg especially if you just jumped from the three liter and then you come in here because we literally just reviewed the everest three liter just like i think three two weeks ago so it's still lingering in our minds right now but otherwise when you're on the road like this doesn't necessarily give you a lot of of issues i mean the pairing with this transmission i always said that probably for me it's one of the best it's still the best in here i can't complain about it at all at all just that one thing because of this car the way that this bike is packed there's this roof rack system and of course there's a flexible rack i put that that thing at the back just so that i can experience the wind noise if it's there and whether when we get to the gravel it's going to be doing the rattling and so on i will experience that and try to understand because that rack system that flexible rack as they call it sports bar anything whatever you want to call it it's an optional extra it comes in at what 19,000 rands over the standard price of this car that is like what 1 million and 40,000 i think uh, I think the price was 1 million and 13,000 but now it's, it's it's it went up a bit <laughs> I'll just confirm I'll put it on the screen but it's an optional extra and the misconception is that it only it only comes with the wild track X which is not the case in fact all the wild tracks in the wild track family you can actually spec them with with that rack and also the roller shutter as well is not free it comes in at around 25,000 rands and that means the price of this car is going to be around what 1 million and 90,000 because there is nothing else that you're going to spec i think the paint as well i'll just confirm that but i think on this one i didn't see that you can spec the paint so when you check everything else i think you're looking at around 1.1 million so that's what we're looking at and for what it is and for what they've given because when i'm looking at what they've done on this one like uh, i've been thinking to myself to say what is it that ford was trying to achieve i feel like this is like the fan edition of what ranger buyers are looking for you know when samsung is doing the the fan edition in the phone giving you what you need and removing what you don't need i feel like this is the case because what i'm seeing in here is that they put all the necessary stuff and cut down whatever is not necessary especially from the three liter v6 like the stop start system for example it's not here the bigger screen that you get in the likes of platinum it's not here you you i mean the cluster one this one i think is the same everything else we're talking now on the outside when you look at it as well we're talking a bilstein suspension that is here because if you look at it this one is riding quite high compared to the other ones so 
it's made for off-road and when we consider the other one that has like off-road suspension like this of course is the raptor but they dropped the fox suspension in favor of the bilstein i heard that the bilstein in this case is much firmer and it responds quite well to the off-road and a lot of performance enthusiasts whatever when it comes to cars they love the suspension whether it's on normal cars or bikes or whatever that may be because the way it performs apparently it performs much better and when i think about it as well i did think about the the load capacity of this one because it does have the highest load capacity of all the world tracks so it looks like this one is better because it's just around what 966 kg or something and if you look at the raptor it's like the lowest of the ranges we're talking about what around less than 700 kgs of, of load capacity i don't think that's made for loading or anything like that and that suspension as well affected the towing cap because in here you still get the towing cap that you get in the standard one which is like 3.5 tons and in the raptor it's cut like by a thousand kgs that is one ton a whole ton that it can pull in this case and this one can do it so when we consider what it does because the suspension as well is tuned for off-road let's just see how this thing performs on gravel like this i haven't i'm just moving at like eight kilometers per hour but what i want to see i'm not going to put it on 4h because i don't think it's necessary honestly I mean, I need the torque when I need it. When I'm losing grip in the front, I'm sure this thing can help me. So let's just punch it and see how it performs. We'll just talk more about it on the road, of course. The grip. <laughs> ah, okay. Man, gravel is lovely, man. Gravel is lovely. You know, one thing about it is that this one has a wider track compared to the normal wild track in this case and that helps because then that means the front wheels and the rear wheels in this case because it's both they are a little bit further apart compared to the normal one so on curves it should be performing better and of course the flexibility the agility must be much better of course owing to the suspension that is here as well ah let me see how it goes on tar road like this i have to say for me the wind noise is yeah i think it's owing to this rack system ah uh, yeah i think i was talking about it at some at some point back there but i just forgot because the wind noise is, is quite noticeable compared to the normal wall track and yeah i think as well because of this flexible rack and stuff but otherwise i'm not to bother when you push it to the front like that it's okay but it's noticeable let me see the comfort now ah ah okay there's this noise that is coming from the rear i don't know if it's the flexible rag or it's the load bay or what but let me listen to it get into this portal this one Ah, 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 but this thing is, is <laughs> it doesn't for some reason doesn't feel as rigid as the normal wild track and i think of course it's it's because of the suspension that's here and when you consider the super duty ones that they have their leaf springs and so on i think it brings this rigidity that you get when you are in these buckies and this one i don't feel the same it feels un unusual like it's like it's not the ranger as i know it and probably almost similar to the raptor the previous gen the way that it feels right now because there's this rigidity that you feel when you are in the normal one like it's like you're you know when you're holding a steel bar and you hit something with it there's these vibrations that come to the hand they are not annoying but at the same time you can feel them in here mm, i don't feel the same the comfort levels though i can argue that uh, it's not the same as much as it's almost redundant but it's it doesn't bother me that much but it's not the same as the standard one i think i would prefer the standard one if i'm just going to be normal doing normal driving uh but in here man <laughs> you can feel that it's it's confident this thing is confident it's literally confident i want to 
get i want to check where the sound is coming from let's see let's see actually let's see where the sound is coming from look around the space i think we are cool i want to push this thing to the front this what do they call this again flexible roof rack lock maybe i should lock it on the other side just to make sure that yeah now i think it's locked if it makes the same noise then i don't know where this noise will be coming from let's kick it again and see maybe now i should put it on 4h just to show you that i don't think it's different so right now full 4x4 let's go ah. <laughs> man, man this thing is fun i don't want to lie to you like when you're just having the confidence that this thing has ah this key it's making some rattles now i just want to listen to the sound in the back but the kind of fun that you will have in this like the confidence is you can feel that it's it's more confident i don't know how much 20 millimeters in terms of extra track wide whatever wider track is doing engineers know that but for me it does feel a little bit different different in how it's performing a little bit better and the suspension as well as much as i don't think for everyday use i would prefer it any like better than the normal one but at the same time i think you can feel that it's more playful okay <laughs> this gravel is a mess and these tires because this one unlike the 20 inches that we had it's sitting on 275 70 i mean this thing this tire is like this size 70 a whole 70 and i'm thinking yeah it does contribute a lot to how fun it feels you don't get a lot of rattles that are coming in due to the tires and stuff because the other ones i felt like they're a little bit low profile as much as they're quite big as well but they you do get that it's low profile but that thing is solid and i think the difference in suspension here you can feel it but this thing is agile man it's yeah i am enjoying this ah uh, these general grabbers are contributing a lot to how fun this thing feels you don't you feel like you can do this every day and yeah and not worry about it at all you don't need to protect it it can protect <laughs> can protect itself this one ah but this gravel i once came with some bucky and people thought it's the road and not the bucky and i said it's the bucky and i keep proving it that i think it was the bucky <laughs> ah. Man, these brakes are good as well, eh? Ah, this thing reminds me a lot of the previous GM Raptor because I drove it on this road as well. And yeah, it, it felt almost the same. I mean, the engine's almost the same. The spec is almost the same. I think the 83 tires that I hear are the same as well. So yeah, when I'm thinking about, I think that one has a wider track though because it's like, you can see that it's bulky, it's angry. Brrr. Ah, but this thing. <laughs> oh, I'm even at the end of the gravel road right now, but yeah, I think from the perspective of what they're trying to do, making it more off-road based, this is this is amazing. This is quite amazing. Yes, I don't think from comfort perspective, it's beating the standard one, but for off-road purposes, this this is quite amazing. Otherwise, if you look at it from the perspective of what it is and what they're offering here this is quite a look i mean what a beautiful looking bucky this is probably one of the best looking wild tracks right now because you can see in front they've added the matrix leds which are quite amazing at night i will show you you know i will and when you consider that now they've added that still best plate and i think that's the thing that keeps making me think that they expected like the previous gen raptor and when you look at the grill as well the honeycomb grill i think you're only gonna get it on this pack they included the leds in there which do an amazing job at night working together with the metrics searching for darkness otherwise let me put it to 4a because i can shift on the fly and yeah i think up to 100 kilometers i can shift on the fly so yeah that's what you get outside and then you do get the 
aluminum cast side step as well 17 inch beautiful looking rims you come to the rear as well you'll realize that not a lot has changed of course it was packed with uh this roller shutter together with the flexible rack as they call it uh, i think now i removed it and when you are here still because of this roof rack that is here you still get like some wind noise which is noticeable but you can delete it with the sound system which will play now but hey when it comes to how it looks everything else they've done a great job this thing is amazing it rides higher than all of them i think i've already indicated that it it has like when it comes to the load capacity it is more than the others as well and i mean what else do you want this thing looks amazing coming inside as well you'll see that they put this it's like alcantara like i don't know what is this but it, it looks like alcantara but it's not alcantara the seats they've added alcantara of course they are quite amazing they look nice uh in terms of comfort i can't say they are any different or anything like that but they've cut a lot of stuff that is not necessary as well and i think this lane keeping aid keeps giving me problems and just trying to drive for me otherwise inside you will see that is a wild track x i don't think you'll find much different to the normal wild track i think there's like metal scuff plates or something like that here just on the door and besides that you still get the spec as you get it in the wild track and you also get this sound system of course the pno and speaker sound system and because it has some quite like a lot of windows compared to the normal one I think for me the sound system does cover for that because if you want to play the sound system well you can do that easily quite good it's quite good i like it and when it comes to full consumption of course for me i don't find it that different to the three liter honestly it's just a matter of which one do you prefer in this case because i think i was averaging just around 13 in the three liters and here it's like 12 11 so for me it's quite redundant and if you're a person who's going to be driving on the road like this every day maybe you should consider the three liter because the prices are not that far off i'll just probably put them on the screen but otherwise hey i think when it comes to the ranger you can really go wrong this is <laughs> i just love it they've done a great job i don't think it's gonna be easy to find anything like it and with that said thank you so much for being here with me today i really appreciate it and i am out